Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, September 16, 2021. This is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. You tried to say that you, you found the show. I have been working a little bit harder to find the show. If you go to DaveLander.com, usually on Thursdays, when I remember, I post it on there. At some point in time, I'm, I'm going to hire somebody to remind me of everything I need to do, including watch my own Landry list sometimes. So we'll get to that in just one second. I did take some of those trades, though, by the way. Some of the guys, some of the, you know, I just need to pay attention more in the Facebook group because I know you guys talk about them quite a bit. Um, what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, feel free to fire away tonight. We've got a pretty small crowd, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, just hold off on the stock picks until we get close to the live charts, and then just ask about one at a time and hit return. That's for your benefit. You can ask about as many as you want. We should be able to get to everybody's tonight. All right, so we're going to talk about, well, as for what do we focus on? I want to talk more on doing, uh, doing trading stuff. And that all comes from recently somebody said, exactly what do you do? And I basically said, I buy stuff that goes up and sell stuff that, go, that goes down. And in some cases, you could actually do just that when it comes to IPOs on occasion and when it comes to crypto. I'm going to talk a little bit about crypto in a few minutes. And for the last few years, I've been really cognizant of what I'm doing and then ex extremely cognizant since I thought about the, the trading stuff type of theme. Like, okay, what am I doing? How do I share this with, with others? And like the opening gap reversals and things like that and things of that nature. And I've also been super cognizant of my emotions. And instead of just screaming an F-bomb, you know, or dropping an F-bomb, I'm gonna drop an F-bomb. Oh, I need the camera to do that. Camera's got a mind of its own tonight. But uh, let me drop an F-bomb, let's see. <laughs> there is the F-bomb. I couldn't reboot because I had to make that video earlier. Anyway, um, so I've been really cognizant of, of my emotions and and specifically, Especially, I should say, how I'm sometimes buying when I need money. I'm sorry, selling when I need money or buying when I have money. And occasionally something a little bit more sophisticated, as Tom McClellan's mom once said. Some people buy stocks when they have money, sell stocks when they need money, and others use far more sophisticated methods. So her point was that everybody uses timing in their investments. And that's kind of like a a plus for technical analysis, because if you're looking at the charts, there's nothing magical about that. You're just looking at, or you're just reading the psychology of the market. And some of that will come out in the presentation. But anyway, I've been more and more cognizant of that, almost as if someone is is standing over my shoulder. And in some of these cases, I want to talk about exactly what I'm doing, like as I did the stock chart show, how I find setups. And then tonight, a little bit about position trading, Russian dolls, crypto, and and sometimes just doing nothing and learning how to be extremely patient. And that'll all come out in just one second. And I have a lot more to talk about too. This is Flame Screen, as you know, you can lose money trading as or, or as often sum it up, all pictures about the future and a lot of stuff can happen to me now and then. So I've been talking about this trading stuff, as I just said, for, for a while in these shows. And I've been really cognizant of what I'm doing and, and how I could share things and how to be more and more transparent. And I'm trying to throw out as many trades as possible in the Facebook group. And I'm also taking, obviously, the trades in the service. And I've been showing more and more of those actual trades in these things. So, again, this all boils down to when I meet someone, they ask me what I do. And I'm like, well, I'm a trader and I also have an educational business. And usually they'll they'll take that at face value. And then when they see me in shorts and a t-shirt and barefoot or whatever, or compression socks, <laughs> they'll be like, what exactly do you do? And, and I'll say, well, I just buy stuff that goes up and sell things that go down. And sometimes you could do just that. And we'll get to that in one second. Anyway, this is kind of what I was gonna, what a, I thought would be a great kind of nutshell type of stock and one thing that I that I do want to come out I'm a little I guess it's a little embarrassing but it's probably good to show like this stock I thought was an IPO and that had me 
pretty excited about it. Now, what would the world be without hypothetical questions, as Mr. Wright once said? But I think it looks pretty good, even if it was an IPO. So if you saw this in the stock chart show, I think I call it an IPO, but then it appears to have a longer history. And that's one of the things that can happen. Is it an IPO? Okay. It's not an IPO. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think it was an IPO. Initially, I thought it was. And let's just turn off this camera because it's just going to give us grief. Yeah, so it's not an IPO. And that's one of the problems with sometimes with the IPOs is sometimes you don't realize that they're not an IPO because one soft software package might pick them up and maybe it's when they change exchanges or whatever. But anyway, I thought it looked pretty good in its own right, at least hypothetically, I, I assume I would take the same trade. But you can see the big blue arrow is pointing higher. It had about a 40% or so run. That's a decent run. And then the stock pulls back. And that's pretty much, if you look at like my little nutshell screen, that's pretty much the methodology in a nutshell. Most of the methodology, at least, is trading pullbacks. And I'm going to flesh out some of those more specific patterns in a few minutes. So this was the stock of the trading service, Adalit. And the entry was 1085, stop 940, because sometimes we are wrong. And then initial profit target of 1230. So let's take a look at that. Entry is here, stop is down here. Initial profit target is up here, right around or right above the old highs. Now let's take a look at what happened. It took a few days, but it eventually triggered and it did hit that initial profit target. And by the way, this is a good little quick lesson here. It actually, this is actually closer than this line might show, but it actually came for two days, it came within spitting distance of the initial profit target. And it's okay to apply a little bit of discretion, especially if that happens super fast. And I'm gonna show you one that happened not all the way to the profit target, but ran up significantly in the first 15 minutes of trading, or like in five or 10 minutes actually. Anyway, you can see it did rally nicely since, and it's kind of backed off a little bit. I think it was a tiny bit higher by the end of the day today, but so far so good. We are free rolling, so to speak, on this position with the hopes. I know you said hope, but hopefully we'll be with it for a long, long time. And if in post, I'll put in a portfolio and the OPA portfolio and uh, show you where we are longer term with some of these positions that triggered way back last summer. So that's pretty much exactly what I do. I'm looking for pullbacks for the most part, okay? And I'm looking for a place to get on them, looking for a spot where the position would be a failure. Not that I want it to fail, but you have to realize that sometimes positions fail, right? And initial profit target, just in case I'm right small and it comes right back in, at least I get something off. And if I'm trading on a 100K account, I would have, in this particular case, I'd have 13.79 shares, but I'd round that up. And I'm pretty sure I did 14 in one account. I did a little bit more in some other accounts. But I try to keep as true to form, at least in one account with this. So when I look at that account, and even if I have shares elsewhere, I'll throw a few hundred shares in this account to make sure I'm following the service. And believe me, having a service, by the way, makes my life a lot easier as far as following the trades. On the trades I do outside the service, there's a little bit more question because I, I, I'm not as good of a planner as I am when I'm being forced to make a plan. Now, recently, I said, I'd be willing to bet that one of the next five stocks I recommend will turn into a big winner. And one of you guys called me out on that, rightfully so, in the Facebook group and said, hey, if you're is that a little dangerous to say something like that. And the reason I said it was, I think that if you're, you're being prudent and patient, and we went 49 days, I think it was about six weeks, but it was actually 49 days from setup to setup, from one setup triggering to the next setup triggering. And then in between, there was probably three or four weeks of no setups. And then it took like a week for the setup to finally trigger. And that was an A-lit, which I think took uh, three or four days to trigger. So maybe that's going to be one of those five that turns into a big winner. But I'm going to keep an eye on those and see what happens. And the, that line of reasoning comes from Mark 
Douglas. And what his what he's saying is that let's say you had a few losing trades and you got all bummed out. Well, if you're following your methodology, that just means you're closer to the next winning trade. As I've said, told the story many times back on a cassette tape from the task conference. I think that's what it was called. Uh, technical analysis, something group or tag, tag conference. But back in one of those tapes I was listening to, he said that a, a, a bad salesman makes a few bad sales calls and then goes to drink his lunch because he's bummed out. A good salesman makes a few bad sales calls and realizes he's getting closer and closer to some good sales calls. He gets a cup of coffee and he, and, he, and he bangs out some more phone calls or whatever and finally makes some sales. Well, if you're following your methodology properly, and in this case, it involved not doing anything for a long, 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 long time, then you're getting closer and closer and closer to that payoff. So he used the word hope, but hopefully a lit is, is the one, and I don't have to wait for the next five, but we'll see how it turns out. Now, as I discussed in a weekly charts going back a few weeks, and in the now column on my website, I think it'd be kind of cool to to do a trading ticket project where I had a limited amount of trades to make over a limited amount of time. And that line of reasoning comes from Warren Buffett, and he said that if you only could make, let's say, 10 investments over your lifetime, now he did say, he did hint at maybe loading up on that one position because you felt so good about it, which I think is a bad idea. But the line of reasoning does make a lot of sense. Wait for that best opportunity and don't blow a ticket. In his case, he was talking about a punch card, but I figured a ticket would work out nicely. So I peeled off 12 tickets and that's what 12 tickets looks like. And I figure I'll give myself uh, 12 months. So I could blow them all in one month, or I can hang on to them and blow them all in the next month, or the last month, the last 12th month, or I could spend them any other way I want. But once they're gone, they're gone. And I, I would imagine that as I got further into this, this project, that I'd be very tempted to hold on to them, thinking that they could be a better opportunity down the road. Now I figured 12 months would be a good time frame and 12 tickets just kind of all works out to at most one trade a month if you average it out, right? So we'll see how that works out. And as I said in the now column, I think turning it into some kind of product would would be kind of fun and would force me to focus on things. And, and I haven't fleshed that out and whether or not I'll actually do that or not, I think it's, <laughs> I don't think it would be a profitable, a very profitable product, except for I think if I was working with you and you were to spend a ticket and I was going to take the same exact trade with you, then I think it would work out pretty good because I'm not going to put my hard earned capital on the line unless I think it's worth a shot. Anyway, just kind of something I'm noodling with and I need to just start a blog with uh, this concept and, and let you know how how I'm doing, when I'm going to spend a ticket, et cetera. Anyway, so I just want to kind of mention that. And, and it all boils down to obviously the patience thing. And and believe me, I need sometimes I need to learn to to be more and more patient myself. Now as I have talked about quite a bit my core trading service, I kind of want to see it's more as a tip sheet because, yes, I do recommend specific stocks and I do put out the Landry list every day, which is ancillary setups. But I also do market timing and I also obviously talk about the state of the market. And then when there's teachable moments, I talk about that too. So I want the service to be seen as a lot more. Than just a tip sheet but i have to say there's been some pretty good tips so to speak as of late so let's shift gears let's take a look at a couple of these and then i want to shift gears and and look at a few in the live charts and then 
we're gonna get to crypto in just one second. This was that. This was that. <laughs> and it triggered here a few days ago and it ran up. And one of you guys texted me and said, I'm up fifteen hundred dollars in less than fifty minutes. I think it was less than five minutes. And he just couldn't look a gift horse in the mouth, and he locked in at least half on that, I think. And, uh, you know, good for him. And, and the thing is, when you're, when you're trading for a swing trade and a longer-term trade, if you get a really fast move, even if it's not quite to the initial profit target, and it could be one day or over a couple days, it's okay to lock in half of those profits and the thinking is these fast moves sometimes are hard to sustain and it's okay again to not look that gift horse in the mouth and this is what it looked like on an intraday chart and it, it was pretty quick it happened really fast this thing just went crazy and it came back in a little bit as you can see by the end of the day and it did slightly above the entry although last i checked and i have this screen behind me on oh, I'm, I'm not live anymore uh, last I checked, it was actually uh, up nicely in after hours trading. Now, before we get to crypto, let's shift gears real quick. And I want to show you a couple of other stocks and some ways to possibly trade them that were on the lander list. So Tasks was on the lander list. And you can see nice little pullback, nice little TKO. And if you were trading it as like uh, a Russian doll, meaning a pattern within a pattern, you could Yesterday it triggered and you may have you may have gotten a little bit out of the trade. And then we had a nice little follow through today. Now, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. I did keep a small position of this one overnight. And you've got to be careful if you're day trading and holding positions overnight, okay, or intraday trading as I call it. But if you're trading a bigger picture pattern like this and you're just looking to capture an intraday move. Okay, it's okay to hold on to a few shares. Don't hold on to a lot of shares because if you're trading really, really short term and a pure short term basis, then you're not going to make enough money longer term. Okay, but if you enter and you're willing to stick with it longer term to pay for the occasional whacking that you might get, occasional spanking you might get, then that's fine. Okay. And just don't hold on to a lot of shares in a case like this. So if you're going in as, as a longer term trade, that's fine, okay? But sometimes when you're doing a day trade, you might have your risk a little bit on the high side. You might be leveraged up a little bit. So if you are gonna hold them overnight, and I did hold a few shares of this one overnight, then make sure that you're not over leveraged, okay? On the date of the entry of DATS, the close was down from the entry. Today, we're above the entry. Yeah, okay, that, that chart was spanned over a couple of days. And, and uh, But yeah, with the after hours, we should be doing pretty good. Here's another one. And truth be told, I actually overlooked this one just because I was chasing some other rainbows. And, you know, it kind of pains me to admit some of these things. But I think it's important that I admit my mistakes, one, because I don't like admitting them, and, and that means that I will be making less of them, hopefully, if I am to admit them or have to admit them, okay? It's part of the being more and more transparent. This one worked out pretty nicely, and in hindsight, I think I missed a pretty good setup. It, it kind of had a gradual uptrend or gradual trend line, and then it began to accelerate higher before it pulled back. So I did miss this one. I know maybe some of you guys took it. I'm not sure. I haven't been, uh, I've been in the Facebook group lately, but I haven't read every post. Usually I catch up on, on the post on nights and weekends. So hopefully some of you guys played this. If you did play it, just let me know, either in the chat here or in the chat down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Just let me know on that. I appreciate it. Now I want to, let me just show you something really cool here that John Z showed me while we're in these this browser window. 
and this is on crypto.com and I don't know how to share this huge URL. I guess I could uh, throw it in members resources, just do a cut and paste. But I'm sure if you go to crypto.com, you should be able to find this little ticker thing. And this is kind of cool and I'll occasionally throw a browser window up. I My monitors are, are 34 inches. Let's see, one, two, five, get ready to go to six. <laughs> But each one I have split into two with a program called Display Fusion. And it's a little, uh, it's not shareware because you're going to buy it, but it's a little cheap program and I don't get anything by if you buy it or not. But if you have a decent sized monitor, it's kind of cool because you could split into, you could split a monitor such as, uh, you could split it in four if you wanted to, but you could split a 34 inch monitor into two pretty much equivalent to like a like a what used to be a, an average size PC and it's pretty cool but anyway as you can see this little ticker flying by the top and it's kind of, and if you're playing relative strength in the crypto which we'll talk a little bit about in just one second you could actually just work to stay in these top pairs now the only problem is some of these pairs aren't available and I'll explain that in just one second now we'll come back to looking for Landry like pullbacks in just one second. Let me go back to the slides and I want to talk a little bit about some random thoughts on the crypto. The bloom may be off the rose for this cycle. And if you go back a few weeks, I was really, really, really hot and excited, or really hot on crypto, or crypto was hot at least. And then I got stopped out of everything and I was flat for a little while, maybe a few days, maybe a little bit longer. And then slowly but surely I started putting on positions again, putting them on, taking them off, sometimes getting stopped out, sometimes catching a, a little trend. But it hasn't been as much fun lately and I haven't been printing money like we were. And I say we because I know some of you guys are doing the same thing. And it's not rocket science and, and I'll get into some of the things or the RS and then the Landry light pullbacks in just one second. But the RS game, relative strength, not relative strength indicator, okay? But the RS game meaning just buying the hottest coin, whatever's up the most on the day, day over day. And that little ticker thing I just showed you is a little tool that's kind of fun to have and just leave it up on the screen and check them out and try to make sure you're in some of those. And I'll take, we'll take another look at that in one second. I'll, I'll let you know if I'm in any of them. So with the momentum trading, as the markets cool off, you're going to have to back away from that. And hopefully, and there's that word again, but hopefully be able to play at least a few of the coins that are going up. And again, buy things that go up, sell things that go down. And what I've seen as of late, it's it's sort of coming back. Now that they're correcting, if you want to call it that. Some of them are crashing. But it's sort of the, you're back to like the core methodology, the trend following moron stuff, pullbacks and things like TKOs and Landry Light pullbacks, which I'm going to walk you through in just one second. Now, some of the hot coins, as I alluded to a minute ago, are exciting, but they don't trade in the U.S. So you, you put that little ticker up or you get your relative strength list up and going and you're all excited. It's like, well, wait a minute. My broker doesn't have that. I have three brokers and out of the three brokers, a lot of times they don't have that. And I'm actually thinking about adding a fourth. But they are some of these brokerages you can't use in the U.S. And then to make matters even worse, some of them that are in the U.S., some of them are, are not in all states. So maybe I'll have to contact a relative or something and say, hey, you want to get into crypto? <laughs> Let me put a, a few thousand dollars into a crypto account in your name and we'll, um, we'll trade some crypto. Now, shout out to John Z from the group. John, you here tonight? If not, thank you for uh, showing me that little ticker thing. That's kind of cool. 
And it seems like more and more of that stuff is starting to pop up on the web as, as crypto gets hotter and hotter. Now, this is one that I may have talked about a few weeks ago, but you can see back in August, crypto was heating up. And I simply bought this pair, okay, a crypto or shitcoin as we call them, SHYT. And I flipped it out the next day, got a little profit, feeling pretty good. And said, you know what? Let's just keep on keeping on and see what happens. And I think I stopped out somewhere around here. And as I said, going back in those presentations, if it doesn't pull too far away from the 30 EMA, that becomes a good stopping point. By the way, when we get to the, go back to the charts, I do want to talk a little bit about the 30 EMA and the S&Ps. It's pretty cool if I say so myself. I know you won't party with me. So with the Landry Light pullback, you're just simply looking for 10 to 20 bars of Landry Light. And if you don't have stock charts, ACP, you could just plot a, a 30 EMA in any pretty, pretty much any package. The only thing you're missing will be the Landry Light down below. Uh, Landry Light is in Metastock, believe it or not, for everyone. And it's called Dave Light, I think, there. And then we've later morphed it into Landry Light, thanks to, I think it was Mike P gave me that idea. Because my wife's like, why can't you be like Bollinger? Put your name on something. It's like, okay. All right, Marcy. So anyway, Landry Light pullbacks, you're looking for 10 to 20 bars of Landry Light. And it's kind of hard to see with this color scheme, but you could put, see this little 30 and 10 right here. And by the way, if you want to experiment with a simple moving average of Landry Light, that's what I use for the TFM 10% system. You could change this to, um, you can change this to a simple moving average. And the plugin is free. If you have ACP, you click down here. The only caveat is you have to like this video because if you're getting a plugin, you must like the video, but the plugin is completely free. And you can see, even if you didn't have this indicator down here, which is kind of cool because you could actually see it kind of unfold, right? But even if you don't have this, just draw, I just, the easiest way to show you is just put the arrow in between the moving average and the price, and that's Landry Light. So the low has to be greater. And down here, you can see you had one through three bars of Landry Light right here. This market really wasn't taken off. Comes back to the EMA, so it goes back to flat. Over here, you had the highs less than the moving average, so it counts the bars to the downside. This does not count magnitude. A lot of people get confused with that. In fact, in the members area, when I talk about Landry Light, or I think we still called it Dave Light back then, a lot of people get that question wrong, people who make it that far, at least through all the courses, and I have to actually walk them through it. It's a bit of a trick question, and it does not, it just counts the number of days, not magnitude. For some reason, it looks like magnitude, but I like it to display like this so I can see how many days it's gone without kissing that moving average. And 10 to 20 days is a good number. Now, you can't just trade this mechanically. And as I said in, not the last week at Bandcamp, you, but as I said in yesterday's stock chart show, when I was working with someone to help him find setups, I just thought that he was doing things mechanically because at that time I was trying to do things a little bit more mechanically. And I was a CTA back then and trading commodities. And you don't just blindly take every setup, okay? There's a little discretion involved. The good news is it's very, very, very teachable. And there's a lot of little things like gaps against this trend that you could avoid and some of those things I talked about yesterday. And one of the things I talked about was I had an unfair advantage because I have a mentor, but if you're watching this video and you're not in the Facebook group, which you have to be a gold member of Dave Lander, the group is free, but it's a benefit of being a gold member at least, or a service member, of course, and the benefit there is you can bring up a chart and we've got some good traders there that'll chime in and I'll be happy to chime in too. Not that I'm the grand poobah or anything. And some of you guys really take advantage of that and that's great. And I think that's how you learn. And, and that's certainly how I learned and I would recommend stocks. And that was the, the gig that I had, this consulting gig I had. 
was to find stocks and to run scans and write scans and things like that and things of that nature. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> classic Dave Landry, huh? Anyway, I knew if I was going to keep my job, I better start finding better stocks. And and this gentleman was very patient with me. And one by one, he would tell me, no, I don't like it. It's got a gap. It gets a trend. So I would I made a middle note of that or some actual notes. And then I never showed him another one with gaps against the trend or gaps against the setup, especially gaps against the setup. Anyway, the Facebook group is great because we're able to interact. And it's good to see that, you know, we don't all have it figured out and we're all working. And we all have good times. We all have bad times. And it, it's just a wonderful thing. And as my wife told me a while back, that's the best thing you've ever done as far as me getting out there. Trading can be a very lonely sport, as you know. And it's good to it's good to share with others. And it, it's very helpful. And, you know, little, little tips and tricks like this little currency ticker thing is pretty cool, too. While we're here, and we're going to get into a little bit more in-depth market analysis in just one second, but since we're here, notice the P's have been correcting down to that 30 EMA quite a bit. And, and lately, that's been my favorite EMA. And let's see if we could back the chart out to about a year. And notice how much green we've had, okay, over the last year. And no red, absolutely no red, or not enough to where you can see it. Maybe you squint your eyes right here. You see this little bar, it's less than the moving average, okay? That would be kind of like caution, right? Was it caution, Will Rogers? <laughs> Anybody remember that? God, I'm showing my age. But you can see lots and lots and lots of Landry light, little correction down to 30 EMA. Lots and lots of Landry light, correction, Landry light, correction. and since you're in an uptrend and a continual uptrend, lots of green, and it looks a lot easier than it really is, but basically you could just buy these pullbacks to the EMA. Now, let's take a look, shift gears and get back to crypto for a second. Danger, Will Robinson, that's what it is. Thank you, Sam. You must be as old as me. Danger, I should love that show. And that, uh, that guy that, oh, he was aggravating. Who was the guy that, was the uh, stowaway on the ship, lost in space, that's right. Yeah, I tried watching like a reboot of that and it was horrible. Anyway, before I digress too far, imagine that. So let me just show you something real quick. If you sort the pairs by percent change, you could see that, okay, this one is up. Let's see, let's do it again. Okay, this one's up 30%. But I have no idea where you would buy that particular one. And let me just let me just boot up my the other package I use. Uh, I started using TradingView before stock charts had the crypto, and I begged stock charts to give me some crypto, and they gave me more crypto than I can use <laughs> because a lot of these I can't find where to buy them. But if you're playing a relative strength game like this one right here, I don't know where I can, I don't know if I, I don't recognize that one, but I can tell you right now, if I was just seeing this, I would buy that right now. And, and we bought one, I think it was SOL. I'm trying to think which one it was. And I, I'm, I meant to follow up on it, but it's been so long with the hurricane and everything I forgot. But go back in and watch the last week in charts and in the middle of the show, and I'll try not to do it tonight, but I, I bought a, a crypto. But if we could figure out where to buy this, I would buy this right now. Now, keep in mind that I'd have a stop somewhere in here. If it comes right back in, then I'd get out. But relative strength is just that. You just, it's just that easy, I should say. You're not, it's not splitting the atom. You're just looking for stuff that's that's going up and figure out if you want to buy it or not. I am long atom, I think, and we'll hop into my charting program in one second. But the reason I want to show you the the stock charts program is if you're doing the Landry light thing with the 30 EMA, it could be pretty cool. So let's just see if we could find something that's set up with the Landry light. Of course, uh, ADA looks pretty good. I am long ADA, still long ADA. Okay. From the last trade here, I got in probably on this bar here. 
and it might be in the other program. Nice little pullback to the 30 EMA. So far, not really working out so good, but if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. The, the great thing about crypto, at least for me, is my account's fairly small there, so it doesn't really stress me out, and I just, I'm kind of flippant about it. And I often talk about being flippant and becoming flippant in your trading, and I think that's when you are when you get really, really good, is when you could just put on the trades and take them off and, and not even get stressed out. Now, I will say, a few weeks ago when the account was really, really growing fast, I, I began to care more. And as Larry Williams once said, paraphrasing, in order to trade, you you have to not care. You have to be clinically dispassionate. And the more you care, the worse you do. And and I I been there, done that, got the t-shirt, especially lately, because I'm trying to pull as much money as fast as I can out of the market. Expense after expense. The stupid utility bill went up 40%. How they got that through Public Service Commission, I don't know. 40%, literally 40%. Tree fell in a house, $3,000. Another tree had to come down, $1,000. You know, it's like, so lots and lots of money. Wife wants a pool, so <laughs> a lot of a lot of pulling money out of the trading account. So here's one I bought that was just going up, okay? CRV, and again, we'll get into the other program. I'm just trying to find you a quick... Uh, quick Landry Light pullback. So here's a Landry Light pullback, but I don't like the way it kind of made like a double, kind of like a double tap. What's that? Uh, what movie was that? Zombie movie, Zombie Land. But notice that it pulled back, took off, and then it stalled out and came back in. So even though technically that's a Landry Light pullback, I wouldn't take that trade. So that's a great example of, yes, there's a framework that I work within, but it's not a mechanical framework. And let's just see if we can find another one real quick. And then I'll hop. I'll show you my. Uh, I'll show you my open trades here in just one second. I haven't looked at them in a couple of hours. I hope they're okay. I think I'm long this one. Now this was an okay Landry Light pullback. It wasn't fantastic, but it's kind of interesting because it kind of TKO'd down into the 30 EMA, and then so far it's made a nice little pop higher. Knock on wood. Now, this one is okay. This is Ethereum, okay? And it did pull back to the EMA, but notice it's lost some steam in here. It shot up and came right back in. I think I'm long Ethereum, or I was. I was playing this little rally out, but it was. It certainly wasn't a, a perfect type of setup. This one I wanted to buy, but I can't find it anywhere. And like I said earlier, some of them just simply don't trade. The, some, the pairs don't actually trade in the States, and then the broker, some of the brokerages aren't available in the states this one looked okay i think i was along this one this pop up higher in fact we'll we'll jump we'll jump to the other screen in a second but then it came all the way back this is a pretty extreme move lower back to 30 so i wouldn't be as excited about that one after that move lower now here's a great one to look at because i think i got knocked out of this one recently but notice that it didn't pull all the way back to the 30 EMA. And that's okay if it's in a rip-roaring trend, then you just trade like a generic pullback. Now, if you're newer to trading, then by all means, trade slightly more mechanical, but make sure you're taking the best of the best. And this looked fantastic. This accelerated trend higher, nice little deep pullback. So far, kind of failing in here, but it still looks pretty good. Now it's a trend pivot pullback. Inner would be right above that high. Entry right above that high. Somebody, somebody make a note of that, okay? And then we'll follow up with it in future shows. This one looks pretty good. I don't know where you would buy this. I don't recognize this one, but it took off and it's kind of pulled back in here. It looks kind of interesting. And again, let's uh, let's go ahead and shift gears, and then I'll show you some that I'm actually long, and we'll take a look at the actual portfolio. So we come over here to Trading View. If you're interested in Trading View, I have some information on that on my website. If you go, by the way, since we're in the browser, if you go to my website and there's a big button at the top of the screen and you click on that button, there's a lot of resources and a lot of uh, stuff right here. Learn how to trade stock market trends properly. So click on that. And there's a lot of information about the tools that I use and steps and 
I think you can get my books free, by the way, here, if you're interested in those. And come down here, and here's some of the tools I use, Metastock, TC, obviously StockCharts.com. And I'm doing more and more with StockCharts.com, especially now that I've been doing a show with them for over a year. So let's see, I don't know if I still have this one. I think I might have rebought it as it came out, uh, this Landry Light pullback. This is a little bit of an extreme example. I did buy it here, it was going straight up and stopped out, okay? Ada, we've been talking about earlier. I'm long this one. So far, it's not really working out, okay? FTM. I think I stopped out of this one. I think I got long again on this pullback, and so far, that one's not working either. So remember last week, as or when I say last week, I mean last show that I did, I was getting all excited and jumping up and down because like, oh, oh, look, it just went up another 30% or 40% or 50% or 100%, you know? And you you can probably tell you're not seeing that excitement tonight, you know, because like, oh, it's not really working as well. Here's what I bought because it was going up right there, okay? And then I sold half right here and then stop is right here. Anything green, I've hit the initial profit target and it's a free ride, so to speak, free rolling. Let's take a look at dot, okay? This one pulled back, and it's a little bit of an extreme example, but it pulled back to the 30 EMA, and then I bought it twofold, two things. One, it was the hottest pair on that particular day, and since it, it pulled back to the 30 EMA, I figured it'd be worth a shot, combination of both of those things. By the way, you don't wanna buy a hot one. Let's say, it's, let's say this one back here was like hot on this day here, but it's going straight down. No, don't buy them like that okay buy them when they're at brand new highs breaking out like let's say on this day here at multi-month highs then maybe consider something like that so here's here's another one ren i probably bought on this breakout i've already sold half okay if memory serves i bought it on this day here or bought back on this day here because it was the hottest pair and it looked like it was trying to rally out of the pullback okay Algo, Algo's failing miserable, miserably so far. I probably should stop out of this one somewhere around here, okay? If I haven't already done so. But I was just buying it because it was going up, okay? Or actually, I bought it here, sold half here, and I'm a little confused as to where I am. But some for some reason, it's I got back in. Ethereum, I just figured I'd park some cash at Ethereum because it was going up, okay, on this day here. And I'll probably break it even on that. Probably should get out of that one. Sushi, I hope I'm not jinxed. I think this might be my first profitable trade ever here. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have a hard time making money in it. And I just bought it because it was going up, okay? And then TRX, notice again, not as much green this week, right? And a lot of these, you can see I'm not that excited and talking about, well, maybe I need to get out, right? TRX bought there, sold off a little bit. So far, not so good. So again, not as exciting in the crypto land as it was. You sort by a percent change, and then again, you try to stay in the hottest ones, okay? DYDX, now it's already tailed off, but you, you wanna buy when, when the candle, oh, did I say candle? <laughs> when, the, uh, when it's up towards, towards the high, okay? You wanna buy into those new highs, believe it or not. This one looks kind of interesting because it's based out and now it's starting to break out to multi-month highs, okay? I wouldn't buy it down here, but now it's breaking out to multi-month highs. The thing is, I don't know where you could you could buy this when it says Binance. I don't know if Binance is available to me. This looks kind of interesting, okay? You can, this one you can buy, and maybe I'll buy some when uh, after the program. But you can see that... I'm not buying it because it pulled back to 30 EMA. This is not a perfect setup, but I like the fact that it's pretty strong in here. And, and as I'm doing this presentation, it looks like we've got quite a bit of green in here. Earlier, there wasn't a lot of green and not a whole lot to get excited about. Anyway, so that's crypto. Again, let's shift gears. And any questions on crypto or any thoughts or anything? Because it's still it's still a work in progress for me. I'm still learning a ton as I go. Now let's get back to the slides for a second and then I'm gonna pop right back in and get to the, we'll take a look at the overall market. Start asking, if you have some uh, stocks you wanna talk about, feel free to start asking about them now. 
I know since we started Facebook, we're not getting as many questions live, but that's fine. So again, there's your pullback to the to the EMA. And notice that your Landry light goes away. You've got quite a bit of Landry light here, about 35 bars or so, just kind of eyeballing it, okay? And then you have zero. Why? Well, you came back to 30 EMA, okay? So you just need to look at this pattern here and then poof, and then you look to get in. In this particular case, I got long as it began to rally out. And again, so far, it's not working. T2107 using a line chart. I think this is why it's a very selective market. Okay, is that what is T2107? Is that something in TC or is that in stock charts? Just tell me where to find it and I'll, I'll be happy to look at it. Now, as I said last couple of weeks, I just want to, okay, I'll take a look at it. Be happy to. Somebody's like, oh, I don't trade crypto. It's like, well, it's not about the crypto, it's about recognizing. A momentum market, any momentum market, jumping in and then having a chair ready for when, not if, when the music stops. I got stopped out of all my crypto. It was 100% cash, except for maybe one or two positions a few weeks back. And then, I, as I said earlier, now I'm coming back in. So the reason I like to trade crypto is because it's going up, right? And it it reinforces the fact that we're playing the emotions of the market. We're playing for the greater fool, okay? And we hope that we're not the greater fool, but sometimes we are, and that's okay. Greater fool means when you buy a stock or crypto or Forex or whatever, or whatever the next thing of the future is, you're hoping somebody will come along and buy it from you. You're hoping for that greater fool. And sometimes he doesn't come along, and sometimes he does. And Linda Rasky says, feed the ducks when they're quacking or take a cookie when they pass the tray around, you know. And for me, taking a cookie is when I'm up 1% overall on my entire portfolio on an issue, according to the money management, I'm risking 2%. I take half off at 1%. And I hang on to the other half for hopefully a long, long time. And again, I'll spend more time next week talking about the longer term, where the money is in the longer term trades. And believe me, it's like lately the market's been pretty choppy and I'll feel like a god for a couple of days on the intraday stuff. And then like a day like today, I'm like, why the hell do I even bother with that? Especially when you look at the longer term trades or even the swing trades lately that have done really well. You could do those trades and still have a life. If you do too much of the intraday stuff, you begin to lose your life a little bit. So anyway, it's not about the crypto. It's about trading, right? So learn to recognize where future money is. I hate for you to lose your money because it's a, it's a wild, wild west. But it's a great exercise in throwing a couple K, just you know, a couple thousand dollars in a crypto account and messing around. Now, if that's all you have, <laughs> you know, so many, saw some video online. Some guy had a, a huge Rastafarian banana, and he said he lost his life savings of $2,700 at the carnival, and all he has is a huge Rastafarian banana. So if you're a banana man and all you have is $2,700 to your name, then by all means, keep your money, learn how to trade by paper trading, and don't put it in crypto. <laughs> but again, it's trading in its ass. It's just getting in, getting off of trends. And it's really easy to be flipping, and it's a lot of fun. And I don't care what these pairs do. I don't care. Every now and then I'll get online, you know, truth be told, and it's like, oh, they're a blockchain that does the peer-to-peer -peer of us. It's like validation. I'm like, hey, what What are they saying? It's like, uh, I'm just going to buy it if it goes up and sell if it goes down. And, again, it's easy to be flippant and not care. And as soon as you start to care, your performance suffers. And, and it seems like as soon as I – start making a lot of money, and then I start caring, and then I don't make as much money. But it also, that also seems to coincide with the momentum cycles. And it's fun because I know what needs to be done. That's where you create a lot of stress for yourself. When you get into a trade, you don't know what exactly needs to be done. And on the momentum stuff and on my core methodology, I know where I'm getting in. I know where I'm putting my stop. I know where I'm taking partial profits. Yeah, I drop an F-bomb here and there, okay? But I'm not really, really super stressing over it because I know longer term it's all going to work. Also, 
I also tip of my emotions when things are going really well because I know conditions will last. But it's really fun in the crypto because you know it has to be done. All right, let's jump out to the markets and I'm going to shift gears and we'll go to we'll go to telechart and let's just take George's question real quick and then I'll we'll pop out to the rest of the market take a look at what else is going on. So T2107 T Two one, T2107. I wonder if I have that in this TC. Oh, lo and behold. Okay, this is percentage stocks above the 200 day. What is that? 200 day PMA moving average? So this says that the percentage stocks that are above the 200 day moving average is falling, which is kind of interesting. I'm not a big fan of indicators. I just like looking at a lot of stocks and the momentum stocks still look pretty good. But if this is what is it what does PMA mean? Do you know? Percent of stocks above 200 day moving average. So I don't know what PMA is, but yeah, that's a really interesting chart. Thanks for bringing it up. By the way, let me give him a shout out. I give him a shout out all the time, but let me give him a shout out tonight. Dave Keller. Uh, does anyone know if he's still live or not in my to-do list today was to find out if, or if he's back live to find out if he was back live um primary moving average i don't know what a primary moving average is um but yeah this is kind of interesting dave keller usually shows a lot of cool stuff like this uh, i don't do i used to look at everything in the world now i just look at a, a boatload of charts and Dave Keller is kind of an invaluable resource to have just to kind of see what he's saying because he was he was lead technical analyst for Fidelity and that's a pretty big deal and I'm I'm pretty blown away by that. He's a good guy. We're good friends. And um at least I think he's my friend. <laughs> I don't know how he feels about me. Da da da. We uh we're we're friends. Uh we met through the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts. But anyway, he brings up a lot of stuff like this. I look at a lot of charts, and that's how I get a feel for things. But yeah, there's some interesting stuff as far as you start looking at the two, you know, charts above the 200 moving average, below the 200 moving average, and things of that nature. But that's an interesting chart, so we need to figure out a little bit more about what it is. All right, let's take a look at the peas. Uh, peas have been kind of choppy on an intraday basis. They kind of uh, kind of been like trading futures have been like beating your head against the wall feels so good when you stop <laughs> maybe that's why i got a headache right now from fighting these futures um uh, keller is quite alive no i didn't mean that is keller alive <laughs> is he is he back to being live on his show because by the time his show posts i've been here about 12 or 13 hours and, and that's enough okay uh, as much as i'd like to stay up and and, and listen to him I need to go home, but if I can listen to him right after the close, uh, like he used to be. And I, I think I said it earlier, we're uh, we're supposed to take uh, my show live next week, and we're going to work on um, we're working on the format a little bit, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be it's going to look a little bit more like Keller's show, is the way with the transitions and stuff. Anyway, S&P 500 kind of flatsville today. Let's take a look at the moving averages. Like I said earlier, so far it's kind of holding this 30 EMA, no Landry light. It's kind of interesting to look at these things. And I was, I was watching something from Keller earlier and he he went back in time, was talking about peas or something and, and holding moving averages and such. And you can see we only have like one Landry light bar here, one Landry light bar here with the 30 and none for a long, long time. So getting back to that green one, the, uh, the ACP charts we were just talking about, it was green this whole run higher, mostly green, I should say. So longer term, S&P looks pretty good. We're not too far away from all-time highs. As long as you're at or near all-time highs, I like to err on the side of the long side of the market. We're only, what, a percent to third. I mean, that's one or two big up days, and we'd be right back to brand new highs. But obviously that, that has to happen. And we did pull back below this prior little breakout and that's a little bit of a concern but i'm not gonna get too excited just yet nasdaq composite looks a little bit better you can see that pullback is above the prior little breakout so far so good 
Let's take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty has just been a pain in the buttocks. And I've been saying it looks toppy all freaking year, right? We didn't have a bow tie down here. It didn't really materialize. I had a pretty serious sell off. Let's just measure that. So it dropped. It dropped about 6%. So it's, it's not enough to get excited about. But anyway, you can see it's sideways at best, and it's it's getting into this huge range. And I used to say bigger the base, bigger the launch in the space. And then I found out that Ralph Acampora said that, and I didn't know that. I'll, I'll say something, and I'll hear somebody say it. I'm like, dang, he's older than me. He must have thought of it before me. <laughs> and then I'll read it in a book from like the early 1900s, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun, huh? Metals and mining. Let's take a look at gold first. Gold, the commodity, kind of ate it today, down 2%. That's a pretty ugly chart. How's that for an oxymoron from Trent Falling Moron? <laughs> Primary moving average. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, there's some, uh, George, dig around on stock charts a little bit. I think they've got a lot, a lot, a lot of market indicators. So watch Keller and maybe pick up a couple of those things and maybe I'll start looking at some of that stuff. Most of my research is empirical. 99.9% .9 of my research is empirical. That's a fancy way of saying I look at charts. Take a look at the metals, okay? Metals overall began to break down today. A little bit of a concern. If we don't take out these lows in here, then maybe we're okay, but I wouldn't get too excited about the metals at this juncture buying them that is because the bow tie moving averages or in downtrend prop order the 10 is less than the 20 ema and the 20 ema is less than 30 ema the 10 is simple fyi why do you repeat yourself so much dave well because tomorrow and the day after in the next three days four days five days people are going to say what what those moving averages Take a look at gold, the stocks, look at that, banging out some new multi-month lows. My favorite time to buy gold stocks is when they're like way down here. So if we go out and bang out some new 10-year lows in gold stocks, I don't buy them when they make a 10-year lows, but when they go down there and base for a long, 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 long time, hopefully like a year, I'm that patient, and then begin to take off, that's the absolute best time to buy gold stocks. Silver also breaking down, as you can see. Drugs are a bit of a concern. Once we zoom in here, you'll see this is a textbook bow tie to the downside, okay? First little bounce here will set up a short, unless, of course, it goes straight back up and makes brand new highs or gets above the moving averages at least, then all bets are off. But if it just bounces a little bit, biotech's kind of bouncy in here, at least today it tried to bounce, but it still looks like it's in trouble. Health services looks okay, though. A little pullback to the EMA. This should get you excited. I don't know. You probably want to party with me. Look at that. Landry Light, pull back to EMA. Landry Light, pull back to EMA. Landry Light, pull back to EMA. Good stuff. I, I think so. And I'm a nerd, though. Take a look at retail. Not doing too bad. Just shy of all time highs. Especially retail breaking out with some vigor. And that might be what's helping out retail. Let's take a look at software. Trying to rally out of the pullback from what? A Landry Light pullback. Look at that. Landry Light this whole way. <whistles> Looks so easy, right? In hindsight, nice little pullback and trying to rally out of that. Really, really nice. Semiconductors, okay. Right here at all-time highs. Can't argue with that. So the point I'm trying to make is that it is a little mixed. I saw somebody talking about transports earlier. We're just off of major lows here. So any further weakness would be of concern. All right. Ah, Spartan just dropped down. I'm glad I'm not on video. I wonder what that's. It looks like a freaking recluse. Yikes. Ooh. Good night. <laughs> Maybe a stupid question. There are no stupid questions. What does Dave Light indicator look like on the Rusty? All right, let's take a look at Rusty. It's, gonna, it's not going to show you anything, really, because let's just take a look. Let's clean up the uh, – let's see if we can get rid of the – let's just keep the 30. So it's not really going to show you much. It's going to show you the market's choppy. In fact, let's do this. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good point. 
let's go to ACP and where you can see the little indicator on the bottom. And just let me shift gears here. All right, the Rusty, let's do this. IWM. So with the, the Landry line on the bottom, which is kind of cool, okay? This was good, okay? When I did the Tarzan presentations, as you guys have probably seen before, it didn't even get all the way back to the EMA before it took off again. But look at that. <laughs> feel like tiny elves. Look, look at that trend. It's huge, okay? So you can see nice, nice trend higher. And then what do you have? Upside, Langer light, downside, Langer light, upside, downside, upside, downside, upside, downside, upside, down, up, 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 down, down, down. So what you want to do in a case like that, let me make this bigger. I'm glad you brought this up. So good job, John. John's a resident IPO fanatic in the group. But you can see green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, choppy market. Okay. Now, anything above 10, you might want to pay attention to see if there's a trend. Okay. So we had, we were above 10 here. Let's see if I can do a crosshairs. So we were above right at 10 here. Okay. But then look what happened. We came right back in and then we ate it, okay, and back down to the to the moving average. So right around here, it looks like a trend's beginning to develop. It's like, you know what? Eh, we're kind of sideways in here. Let's just see if we can make it to new highs. Nope, did not make it to new highs, okay? So it starts going red. It's like, okay, this looks like a downtrend here. We've got 10 days. All right, let's see what happens. Went back to the moving average, chopped around, chopped around, began to break down. Nope, went back up. So it's just kind of all over the place. And believe me, if you try to catch a trend in a market that looks like this, it's a freaking exercise and futility. Yeah, do you watch the slope of the 30 EMA? Yeah, that's one thing that I pay attention to is the slope of the moving averages. I, I like Landry Light a little bit better, but I've done extensive research over the years, especially way back in the day, it was doing mechanical testing. And yeah, I was kind of fantasizing or fantasized. I know you probably, you know, like one buddy of mine, buddy of mine, <laughs> but Dave, your fantasies have changed. But one of the things I fantasized was like, okay, let's just, let's just follow a market as long as the moving average is going up. Okay. I'll follow it down as long as it's going down. You actually might want a little lag in the indicator if you're doing that. And the reason reason is because, as Greg Morris taught me, when a market closes below the moving average, it'll turn down, okay? And you might end up chasing your own tail if you're following the slope. But, yeah, once things get cooking, okay, you say, all right, well, I want 10 days of slope, okay? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Also, 10 days of land, you're like, yeah, let's just make sure we're long this market or this market's healthy. Let's try to be long, okay? And then you can see the slope kind of fizzles out a little bit, turns down when the price does what, crosses below it. So maybe you want to wait for several days of slope, but I, I've tried everything under the sun. And I think that's I think that's fine. It's conceptually correct, George. Okay. So as long as something's conceptually correct, it's not saying like uh when the sun crosses the moon or whatever, or there was some uh, I read somewhere and, and I never can give credit where credit is due because I read so much or I've read so much over the years, I gave away almost all my books, as you guys know. I think y'all have, but maybe you could find it. <laughs> but some guy noticed that when the cows were on one side of the field, soybeans did really really well, and then the cows were on the other side of the field, soybeans did really, really poorly. And there was no conceptually correct reason for that, okay? So, yeah. 45 degree angle, strong trend. Yeah, you know, I played around with those kind of things. Uh, by all means, like, but don't forget to eyeball a chart. And, you know, don't forget to draw a big blue arrow. I mean, this Landry Light's really cool. Like, hey, Dave, gee whiz, that looks fantastic. But look, it's also going up, okay? <laughs> so just look at the look at the chart, too. All right, let's, any, uh, any individual stock questions? I know, again, we covered quite a bit. AUPH, all right. For Jeff, let's uh, shift back to the... Telechart, AUPH. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, you got good volume. This one I think has been coming up in my scans. It's a little kind of crazy in here, but now it's starting to get its act together. 
let's back the chart out. Yeah, one thing I don't like is this prior peak in here, and I don't know what happened way back here, okay? So if I was just looking at the right side of the chart, and if you find a broker that lets you trade it off the left side, let me know, please. I would say this looks fantastic, Jeff, especially if it pulls back a little bit more, okay? Not all, it wouldn't, it doesn't have to come all the way back to 30 EMA. I think it looks fantastic. I'm a, I, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. I would not take this as a position trade, but I might think about taking it for like a, just an intraday trade, maybe a little pop or something, because that looks pretty darn good. I'd like to see again a little bit more knockout moves. So high five for pointing that out. The only problem is it looks a little uglier and it's kind of all over the place longer term. Now, Sometimes with these biotechs, they can get their act together and begin to take off, reinvent themselves, or with all the craziness going on in the world with this stupid virus, who knows? You know, some of these things have begun to take off in here, and the the past charts, I'm not going to say are irrelevant because they're never irrelevant, but it seems they're not as relevant in some particular cases. But I'm kind of a purist. I wouldn't take it as a position trade, but yeah, if you wanted to fire up an intraday trade on that, sure. Okay, let's see if we can, I don't know if I could show this on the screen. Let's see if we can do, I forgot how, how do you do text and telechart? Anybody remember how to do that? No? Uh, let's see, that's right here. Okay, oops, I fat finger something. I was gonna put that link in there. Oh, let's see something here. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I could do this in post, I guess. Oh, here we go. Final bar. Okay, I don't know if you guys could see that or not, but that's where you would find Keller Show. A little shout out to my brother from another mother. All right, anything else? BTU. Yeah, I like BTU. Uh, I don't know if it's on the lander list or not, but if it's not, it should be. Okay. I'd like a little bit deeper pullback, believe it or not, but it looks pretty darn good. And I'm just seeing for the first time here, it's almost to the EMA. So I like it. I do like this one. It's considered a metals and mining, but I don't think it's really a metals and mining. Anybody know what it is? It's more of an energy stock, right? But yeah, that looks pretty good. A tiny bit more pullback would be perfect, but it's pretty good looking setup. It's probably on a Landry list tonight. If it's not, it should be, or it will be tomorrow. CRM. Um, first thing jumps out of me here. I know this has been a hot one. Is that it? It broke out past this little peak here. Then it came all the way back in. Like if we if we bring this line, let's bring this line here. It's come all the way back to its prior breakout. So I would pass on that, Harry, just because it's kind of bumping all over over the place right now, or just in general. You want to look at something that looks like this. Nice persistent uptrend. Okay, we can draw a line. Instead of drawing a line back over here and seeing the head trading over here, you draw a line like this, and it's like, oh man, it looks pretty good, right? You still in caribou? Yeah, I got I got I, I got not I didn't get shaken out so much as I had so many positions on, and there was a weekday in the market. And I just started lightening up, and that's in a, in my head. I was thinking, this is this is the epitome of uh, if that's the right word of uh, Mary McClellan's statement: selling stocks because I need money. I just wanted to lighten up and and clean out some positions. And I'm almost at that that point once again. Uh, I would stay long, uh, Jeff. Let's see, one, two, this was, I think this was a buy it be back here. And we, we talked about this at Facebook. I think we all did really well, or, or some of us, I should say, not all, all of us that took it did well. Um, but yeah, I don't see any reason to, to, to be out of that. I don't know why I got shaken out. I'll have to look at my notes. I did take some notes on that particular day. But I, I seem to remember wanting to raise money. The, the, the market was kind of weak. I was running out of margin. And this was one that was just really weak, and it was on. The, it ended up on the chopping block, but it really hasn't done anything horribly wrong. Okay, you could use moving averages now that it's um, been trading for a while, and you could see that the 30 so far is holding, and now you have Landry Light because the 30 now exists. So I would hang on. Um, if you could stomach 24, and maybe even a little, yeah, 24 it shouldn't come go back below much below 24. 
So if you could stomach 24, provided you already took partial profits, where are you long from? Then I would I would stick with that one. While we're waiting on Jeff, any uh, any other questions? 2170. Okay, so you you you'd stop out at a, at a gain. That's great. That's fantastic. Okay. Different time frames with ending a trade, maybe a future topic. Yeah, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Um, I do that, but I only do that on like a Russian doll. So task was one that I recently traded. And if I can look at a, let's see if I could pick out my entries on this one. So on this one, let's see. I probably got in this one. Now remember, this is an intraday trade, but you got a big picture behind you. I probably got in here or here, and by the end of the day, I didn't make much, okay? But I was ahead, and in one account, I went ahead and kept a, a, a small position in that one. So yeah, I could certainly uh, we could certainly flesh that out in the future. But if, for instance, like, um, trying to think of one, I guess like ALIT, okay, go back and rewind after this is done. Like ALIT, I don't look at the intraday chart and say, oh, let me try to get in on a pullback or something. Maybe if I miss a setup, if I'm busy or distracted or something happens, and then let's say the stock triggers and comes back in, I don't try to beat the stock, the system by trying to buy it lower as it's dropping. I'll wait for it to, to begin to rally. And sometimes, and there's one recently, I can't think of which one it was, that I missed the initial trade and then it made like an intraday pullback and it began to take off and I got long on that pullback. So yeah, it would be the same exact, if you were doing that, I mean, that that's really a true Russian doll. I call these patterns Russian dolls, but I actually got long in like this breakout here and I can check the trades and see. Uh, but technically you could say, well, I might get, a Russian, true Russian doll be like a bow tie within a, um, you know, something else, okay? I missed ALIT originally and entered two days later an intraday rally. Yeah, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. Let's take a look at that real quick. ALIT, light them up, ALIT. Okay, let's do this. And yeah, I, and I like the way you think, David. So I don't know which day you got in, but... Maybe on one of these rallies in here. Oh, it might have been back here. So let's say you miss the original setup and then it starts rallying again, breaking out, then by all means. Yeah, you could do that. Oops, three days near the original entry. Yeah, so somewhere back here, whatever begins to take off, that's that's fine. You know, especially if you miss that original original setup, because the market, as you know, <laughs> unfortunately, doesn't always move in our time frame. So Trigger was here, and then it kind of took off a little bit, came back in, took off a little bit, came back in a little bit, and then finally takes off. So if you miss that original entry and it's not that much higher, you could do two things. Sometimes, sometimes if I need to be long a stock, and I think MTTR is an example recently. For some reason, I got knocked out of MTTR because I had some old shares or something. I forget exactly how it went down but the service was still long and I had to close my eyes and just buy because I needed that stock in my portfolio, at least in my most active portfolio, because I watch those stocks during the day, just to see what's going on. And I wanted it in my portfolio. So sometimes if you feel like you need to be long a stock because you missed a signal, don't get cute and try to buy it cheaper. Sometimes you just have to jump in. But yeah, if it's, if it's kind of coming back in a little bit, then maybe wait for, that rally. All right. Uh, any more? Oh, you're welcome, George. George does an excellent job. Thank you, George. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming in tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Any unanswer questions, Dave at DaveLandry.com. Thank you so much. And if we don't talk to you now and then, never have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see most of you guys and girls here and Facebook. Thank you so much.